We design products through a series of trials and errors. But where the errors happen is very important. An error that occurs after you release a product on the market can negatively impact your business. Luckily, it's possible to avoid that using a tool called Prototype. In today's video, I want to discuss what a prototype is, the different levels of fidelity or realism that a prototype can have, and three different types of prototypes. The term prototype is used in different contexts, so it can be difficult to understand what it really is. First, let's discuss what a prototype is not. Prototype is not a sketch, wireframe, or mock-up. Three digital artifacts are static, while prototypes, on the other hand, are always interactive. Prototypes are a simulation of how the future product will work. They allow people to interact with the design. Prototyping can improve the design process in a few ways. First, using prototypes is a great way to validate your design. Prototyping will help you lower the risk of creating a product that will fail on the market. Once you have a prototype of your product, you can validate it in real-life scenarios to see how well it works for your users. If you notice areas where you can improve your design, you can introduce the required changes and go through the next iteration to see if the product performs well. Prototypes can be very useful when you share design with the engineering team, especially if your design has complex motion language. It might not be evident for developers how specific animated transitions should work, what time and OES curve they need to use. When developers can see animated transition rather than read about it, in specification, they will likely implement the transition as intended. Prototyping will help you to explore the problem space. Prototypes will help you better understand the problem you are solving in design, and prototyping can also change your design culture. When you integrate the practice of building a prototype into your design process, you will create a culture of learning. The culture of learning makes you stop thinking about who is right or wrong, but rather how fast you can validate your solution. Prototyping makes ideas tangible, so that you can put them in front of other people and let them interact with your solution. A prototype doesn't have to be fancy. Many times it's possible to validate a hypothesis using low-fidelity prototypes. The more you learn and the faster you will iterate, the better your design process will be. Now let's talk about fidelity or, or level of realism that our prototypes should have. When people hear the word prototype, they tend to imagine a model of a product that looks and works almost like a finished product. In reality, the level of fidelity of a prototype can vary from low fidelity, with bare, a prototype with bare minimum details, to high fidelity, ultra-realistic prototypes. Low fidelity prototypes can look like this, it's a paper prototype. And while fidelity, high fidelity prototypes can look like this, this prototype looks and works almost like a finished product. So, how to choose the right level of fidelity? The fidelity of your prototype should match the fidelity of your thinking. For example, suppose you are the early stages of the product design process and want to evaluate your product's navigation scheme. In that case, you don't have to create high-fidelity prototypes. You can make low-fidelity prototype out of your wireframes and test the scheme. It means that you should always set a clear goal that you want to achieve before creating a prototype. Creating a prototype without a specific purpose often results in a great waste of time. Each prototype should be created for a reason. That reason might be explaining a specific idea or validating a hypothesis. When a product team knows the reason, this knowledge helps build a prototype that matches the purpose. Before creating a prototype, designers should always ask themselves, what problem do I try to solve by creating this prototype? Goal will help you to define the scope for prototyping. You will prototype exactly what you need, for example, a specific user flow. Choose the right level of fidelity and plan activities that you will want to do with the prototype. For example, you might want to schedule a series of usability testing sessions. Now let's talk about different types of prototypes. And paper prototype is the first on our list. Despite that we have many different tools that make prototyping simple, pen and paper remains the most useful tool for designers. Paper prototypes look like this. You can create a prototype using a hand-drawn sketches or printed version of low-fidelity wireframes. All you need is a pen and paper, but you can also add sticky notes and UI stencil to your toolbox to speed up the prototyping process. 
You can add commonly used elements such as menu bars on the sticky notes and move them from one paper sketch to another. Paper prototyping can be extremely helpful during the early stages of the design process, when a team needs to explore various concepts and choose the one that will be used. When the team ideates potential solutions, the paper prototype allows it to visualize and test multiple ideas quickly. Let's discuss some benefits and downsides that prototypes have. Paper prototypes are fast to create, and because it's a paper, you can immediately introduce a change in the prototype once you see that something is not working for your users. It's low commitment. No one wants to throw out a digital prototype that takes hours or days to create. It's much easier to throw out a paper prototype that takes only 10 minutes to create. The great thing about paper prototypes is that everyone can contribute to the design. No special skills are required to sketch a screen. And paper prototyping can be a great team exercise. People from all kinds of backgrounds can participate in creating the prototypes. But paper prototypes also have some downsides. It can be hard to interpret the design. Paper prototypes require a great deal of imagination from people who will observe the prototype. People have to imagine how the future state of a product will look and work just by looking at the paper. Testing only in person. Paper prototyping requires having two people during the testing, a facilitator and a human computer. A facilitator is a person that instructs test participants and interacts with them, while a human computer is another person that remains silent during the session, and this person is in charge of changing screens or states whenever the test participant interacts with the prototype. Last but not least, we need to transfer paper prototypes into the digital format. The critical problem with paper prototypes is that you often have to explain your ideas to people who interact with prototypes. But explaining ideas can be challenging, especially when you're talking about innovative design. It's much easier to allow people to interact with the pro products themselves, so that they can perform their impression. Digital pr prototypes allow precisely that. Digital prototyping is a process of building an interactive experience. Digital prototypes look like this one and created with specific tools, such as Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD or Envision. If you want to know how to create a prototype in a particular tool, let me know in the comments below, and I will try to record video for you. Digital prototyping typically ha happens during the visual design phase, when you have visual styles such as colors, fonts, as well as realistic text copy, and want to see how it works together. Digital prototypes have a few benefits such as they give you a much better feel of how the final product will look like. Users can interact with digital prototypes themselves. This property makes digital prototypes great when you want to pitch your ideas to stakeholders or conduct usability testing session with your design. But they also have a few major downsides, such as they require more time to create, and you should also use special design tools such as Figma or Sketch to create prototypes. Native prototyping is coding a model of your application or a website. The problem of technical feasibility exists for almost any product. Not everything that designers create can be easily turned into the code. But for projects when designers code and create native prototypes, the risk of facing problems with technical feasibility is much lower. The language you choose to use for coding will vary depending on the platform you are building your solution for. For example, if we want to create a native prototype for an iOS app, we will write Swift code. If we want a native prototype of a website, we will need to use HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Native prototyping typically happens at the end of the product design process, after the visual design is ready but development is not yet started. Here are a few popular native prototyping tools. Xcode is for iOS apps, Android Studio is for Android apps, Webflow is for websites and ShapeXR for VR apps. The big, biggest benefit of having native prototypes is that they, they look and work almost like a real product. The prototypes use realistic or real data and you can test a prototype using real devices. 
As a result, native prototypes work well for usability testing. Test participants don't see any difference between a native prototype and a real app. As a result, native prototyping allows you to understand the realistic experience that users have and collect the most valuable feedback. Native prototyping allows you to utilize all the features the device uh, will have. For example, if your prototype a mobile app, you will get access to features such as accelerometer or gyroscope. But this type of prototypes has its own downsides too. They take more time to create than digital prototypes. And native prototypes require strong technical proficiency. You need to know programming languages to build the native prototype. At the core, prototypes are glances into the future. They help us understand how our future products will look and work and create a shared understanding about that. Prototypes will help you guide product design direction because they will support you with the data on how people interact with your design. If you like this video, please subscribe and click this bell icon so you'll never miss a new video. Thank you.